Hello everyone, Tommy J here and welcome to I Show You Games. Today I'm here to show you Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, a first person shooter that we all know because it has iterations literally every single year. So this most recent iteration was developed by Sledgehammer Games and aside from this, the only other thing they've ever worked on um, is that they teamed up with Infinity Ward for Modern Warfare 3. So, one of the previous Call of Duties, except they weren't really at the forefront of that, they were more providing support, they didn't make any design decisions. So, yeah, they've done this one all by their lonesome, on their own engine as well, so that'll be interesting, and we're going to take a look at that today. So, just before we do begin, um, this video is purely about multiplayer, and I do have a video about the single player, and there will be a link to that in the description, there'll also be an annotation at the end of the video. So yeah, we're going to start off by having a look at the options menu because that is something that has been lacking in Call of Duty. If you want to get straight into the gameplay, annotation right now. Just click it. Anyway, so the options in this game are actually surprisingly good. Um, there is a borderless full screen mode, so windowed with no border. Um, there's also colorblind filter, paintball effects, and then as far as the advanced options go, they're decent. There are 24 different options. Um, including things like your screen refresh rate, field of view, anywhere between uh, 65 and 90, which is great because in the past Call of Duties haven't had that, even needed to download mods and the mods have ended up breaking it. They do say that um, there may be some graphical issues. I personally haven't encountered any. I've been playing at 90 the entire time I've been playing this. There's also some text op texture options. So I've got it set to manual at the moment and everything is on as high as it goes. If you set it to automatic, it doesn't tell you what they are. But yeah, there is that control there if you need it. There's also shadow options, post-processing options, anti-aliasing, shader preloading, which is a bit of an interesting thing. Um, yeah, it just means that you're preloading it so you get longer load times at the start of the game. Which I guess is a decent thing. Like, you get to choose when it's going to load that. Now, it runs fairly well. If you are having troubles with your frame rate, uh, you're experiencing drops or whatever, what you can do is change the screen space ambient occlusion to normal or off. That makes a huge difference. And also, in your anti-aliasing, super sampling, get it off times 16 times 8. Down to the lower numbers really, really helps out. So I don't have the best card, um, 680. It's decent. It's no 980. But yeah, I can run this pretty much on ultra, provided I turn down the super sampling with little frame rate drops. Anyway, as far as other options go, you've just got your audio control and voice, and that's about it. So there is options for a gamepad, and you can just plug it into your computer and play. It does include things like aim assist, um, which is always handy, and you can disable that if you don't want it. However, this is a PC game. You're probably going to want to play it with a mouse and keyboard, otherwise you may be at a serious disadvantage. Anyway, let's get into the game itself. So, one of the most important things, in my opinion, about Call of Duty is to create a class. If the create a class is done poorly, it kind of ruins the game for me. So, yeah, let's just take a quick look at the create a class. Um, you've got a point system here, right? And it's very similar to Black Ops 2. In fact, it's almost exactly Black Ops 2. You've got wild cards, you've got perks, and each of your attachments also uses a point. The thing that's different is that you have score streaks, so just right here, and they are actually part of your part of your points. So I can remove that score streak, I go down to 12 points, I could put an attachment on my pistol provided I've unlocked them. Now these unlocks are similar to past games where it involves getting kills, so I've unlocked the red dot, foregrip, laser sight, stock on the KF5. Um, and yeah, say to unlock the hybrid site, I need to get an extra kill. To unlock the focus site, I need 60 kills. That kind of thing there. So if you are using a new weapon, you're going to start with a blind. Anyway, back to the score streaks. So one really interesting thing about the score streaks is that you can customize them. And it's really, really cool. This is one of the coolest things in my opinion. So if I push F1 to customize, just looking at the UAB, UAV right here, there are these things called modules, and they add to the amount of points you require. So instead of getting, is it 400? Yeah, instead of getting 400 points for the UAV, I could get 500 points and have it last longer. So it means it, it's harder to get to, but obviously it's better. For an extra 200 points, it will show the enemy direction. Um, for an extra 300 points, 
it actually counts your points through death. So if you find yourself dying a lot, you can actually do this on all of them, I think. Yeah, so an extra 600 points for the turret. So instead of 550, it's going to cost 1150. But it means if you're someone who dies a lot, you're going to be able to get at least one out during the game. Which is, yeah, really, really cool. So there's other just customizable things like... Um, yeah, it will be a sentry when not remote controlled. It's a rocket turret. 360 degrees. All really, really cool and really customizable stuff. Now, there is one other difference between this and previous code games, and that is the exo ability. So the exo launch is just your grenades, um, but the exo ability is this just extra ability that you can get. So the exo shield, it literally deploys like a tactical shield out of your arm that you can hit people with and dodge, not dodge bullets, absorb bullets. Um, exo overclock, so just temporary speed boost, silence your footsteps, generate health quickly, go invisible. Yeah, so there's lots and lots of little cool things, really, really cool things that you can do there. And that's just a little ability you get in game. Anyway, there's just one more thing I want to show you before we start, and that is your operator. You actually do have full on um, customization over how you look. So I can change my helmet if I want. I like the beanie though, so we'll put it back to that. And yeah, you can just change whatever you want. And you do have multiple different loadouts. So. This loadout right here looks a little different. Now, you unlock things for these loadouts by getting loot crates. And there's a chance that in that loot crate, there will be something. So I think I got, yeah, I got this Marine Exo right here. So it looks a little different to the other ones. And yeah, it's a nice little change of those loot crates. Anyway, let's actually find a game and get into it. Alrighty, so I cut out that loading screen because it is fairly long sometimes. Um, that one was pretty quick, but I've had loading screens of up to a minute before matches, which has been annoying. Anyway, um... So, you're probably wondering, what is different between this game and other Call of Duty iterations? And the answer to that is the exosuit. You may have noticed I was moving very, very fast then. All the exosuit. You have multiple extra functions. So you can dash just by double tapping a direction or holding shift and that direction. So if there's not a table in my way, um, yeah, I can dash like that. You can also double jump. So jump like that. That's a teammate. And this really does lead to some interesting gameplay because there's essentially another dimension in the game. It's no longer 2D where you're just walking on one plane. It's okay. As bad as it was, I killed him. <laughs> um, yeah, so it adds this extra dimension because you can jump and the maps are designed around that. It feels like it's got a little bit of influence from Crisis, a little bit from Titanfall. And it feels pretty good. You can't dodge when you've um when you're aiming down your sights so yeah it's it's a bit different Ooh, where's that person going there they are yeah it's it's a bit different and it means that in fights sometimes the person to aim down their sights first is actually going to lose because say i'm targeting that teammate i target him he dashes to the right i need to correct Whereas all they need to do is keep their cursor on me the whole time. So yeah, it's changing up the formula a bit. And I, ooh, I like it. Can also punch people instead of using a knife. Which is pretty, ooh, god, there's a person there. Lucky they missed me. Quick scoping. Um, still happens, but it's a bit more of a thing of the past. And that was just a kill streak. Oh god, big dodges. Now there are dead zones on certain maps. Damn it. Um, for example, that bit I jumped over before. Yeah, you just kind of fall off and die, which is never good. Yeah, that bit there. You'll just fall off there and die. But you do have the air dash, which can save you at times. The other thing you can do is use the spillity. 
And your ability changes based on what class you're using. Bam, in the face. Oh, teammates are here. Now, all of the abilities have a recharge time, or like an energy bar that recharges over time. Um, so you can't just spam them endlessly. However, when you die, it recharges to full, so that's kind of handy. No enemies there. They're probably... Oop. I wonder what gun he had. I think he fell off the edge. <laughs> Uh, anyway, graphically, the game's alright. I mean, it's definitely a step up from, say, Ghosts was, for example, but Ghosts, let's be honest, did not really impress too much. But things just look nice. Like, look at this wall. I mean, it's not exactly an amazing texture, but it looks nice. Or this water here. Like, once again, when you look at things really close in a game like this, they're not going to look the best, but it looks decent. Like, it really does look decent. And these rocks, for example, like, they have that little bit of a shine to them. And yeah, I, I like it. Let's see where the enemies were. I'm going to go invisible and see if I can punch him. Yeah, punched him. Now I got a UAV. So, one of the biggest problems this game has is actually the ping. Oh, let's, let's get that care package in. Yeah, one of the biggest problems it has... Oh, there's an enemy behind me, damn it. Uh, is the servers. Now, it hasn't looked like I've had lag this game, but I have. Um, and it's fairly consistent, which is annoying. Now, I don't know if this is just because it's launch day, because I'm in Australia. There could be various problems, and, like, if I'm not getting this tomorrow, I'll add a little annotation to the video just to let you know. But, as it stands, the lag is very on-off, and it generally advantages someone, because people don't all lag at once. Ooh! <laughs> he dodged it, I was wondering why I didn't get a hit. So yeah, like, I, I might lag, or they might lag, and the other person does get that advantage because of it. Like, it's not consistent. Um, it could also be people using VPNs, and a lot of different countries using a VPN to New Zealand or something to unlock the game earlier, because first time ever Australia actually has unlocked the game early. Trying to punch people unsuccessfully. So the gun handling is actually pretty good. Um, I guess that's a very important thing in a first-person shooter. But, yeah, the gun handling is good. It feels nice. He died. <laughs> it feels nice, and most of the guns do feel balanced as well. You do occasionally get people still quickscoping, and it's not as strong as it used to be. SMGs, if anything, may be a little weak, just because so many maps have fairly large distances on them. Is that a drone? Whoop. It was a drone. I think it was just scenery, though. But it is much easier to dodge snipers because of this dash. Oh, what? As if that didn't punch him. Jeez, he was quick. So yeah, um, as I said before, the ping is quite variable. Like, if you look at it right now, it's just jumping between full and nothing. Which is not the best. And that was not the best shot. Okay, so how am I going to do this? Jeez, nicely done by him. I want to watch that kill cam. Oh, okay. Fair enough. So, one thing that I've actually failed to mention is that the multiplayer client of Advanced Warfare actually has a maximum frame rate of 91 FPS. Why 91? I have no idea. Absolutely no idea, but it's there. So, for those of you who have 144Hz monitors, unfortunately, some of their potential is going to go to waste. However, 
From what I've seen, this cap doesn't apply to the campaign client. So in single player, you'll be able to push well above that. Um, I'm, I've seen a few screens. I'm fairly sure that people were above 150. So it's always encouraging that the game can run that well. I mean, I'm genuinely impressed that this game can push 150 FPS. So it's pretty obvious that the maps have actually been constructed with the, I guess, parkour in mind. And they've actually done a great job of creating multiple paths of travel. Like there really isn't too much wasted space around the maps. Also, in general, the scenery just looks absolutely incredible. Yeah, um, there are also apparently dynamic features on some maps. Now, I saw one of them, but I haven't really seen too many. And I don't know if that's just because I'm playing TDM. Maybe things are a bit shorter. Hey, I got a, got a helmet. That's cool. Yeah, I'm going to equip that. That looks awesome. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's just a map by map basis. Maybe it's mode by mode basis. Um, it's possible that it is something else. Anyway, I mentioned before that... Actually, did I mention? I think I mentioned. I should have mentioned. They're a loot crate. And they drop randomly. And what they will do is give you a variety of things. Um, for example, on your character customization, they'll unlock uh, an extra... Just an extra thing that you can get. Now, they also unlock weapons. So, this weapon has less damage than usual. So, this is the weapon that I found in the crate. This is the weapon that is normally. It has 11 damage, whereas this one I found in the crate has 10. It has 14 fire rate, whereas that one has 15. Alrighty. So, here we are. Um, I think I may have actually changed servers, been kicked out of that last one and changed... Yeah, different people. Anyway. <laughs> Whoop, there's an enemy up there. Let's just avoid him and see if we can... Ah, oh, damn it. Didn't quite get the drop on him. So I've um, decided to change up my classes, show you a few different guns. And if you don't have a, um... Whoa, how did he know I was there? I knew they had a UAV, but I had... I have a thing that prevents it from seeing me. Anyway, um, yeah, I figured I'd show you out a few different guns. Show you out. Show you a few different guns, the words. Just because they do all act a bit differently. And there is a good variety, as I mentioned before. Got him. So yeah, there's a variety of medals, as there always was in all of the other Call of Duties as well. Let's just jump up here. And grab a sniper rifle. What? How did that miss? Oh well. Ooh. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, there are nine maps. Um, including one DLC map. And... Yeah, there's a decent variety. They are all on different tile sets, I guess. And they're all designed differently, so you're not just going to get the same map over and over, which is, of course, fairly important when it comes to a game that's literally about running around a map killing people. You do want that extra variety. Okay, let's activate that UAV. Gotcha. Okay, well, I'm pretty much out of ammo, so just going to use this gun. Where was that person? Here. <laughs> Perfect. They were controlling the uh, drone that's in the air. It's one of the killstreaks. So, yeah, there are a large variety of killstreaks, which is always good. Whoop, that's one of them. I'm going to try and avoid that because that's remote controlled and very, very painful. Okay, where is people? Let's find someone. 
and brutally kill them. Oh, how did I miss? Bam! And now I have a gun I can actually use, because apparently I am terrible with a sniper rifle. So yeah, I'm actually really happy with this game. Um, it's a lot of fun. It really is just a lot of fun. Because it's got the movement, I guess, of a Crisis slash Titanfall kind of hybrid. Yeah, it, it just works well. It feels fluid. Yeah, just... It's good. It really is good. My only downside, which is a fairly big downside, would be the servers. If the servers continue fluctuating and having issues, then... Yeah, it's, it's going to be a really, really big problem. Let's see if I can knife this guy. Gotcha. And the knife drips with a bit of blood. Oh, wow, we got owned. Oh, well. Yeah, so... What else is there? Um, The modes. The game modes. Let's just close that. Get some... <laughs> Get some idea of how that last kill went. Brilliant, as you can see. Um, the game modes are TDM, Kill Confirmed, Domination, Search and Destroy, Search and Rescue, which was not in Black Ops 2. I didn't play Ghosts. Um, Hardpoint, Capture the Flag, Momentum, and Uplink. Now, there's also actual modes as well. So there's the mode we're playing right now, which actually has the tech suit. Then there's Hardcore, which is the same, but people die much quicker. And then there is traditional, and traditional means there's no exosuit. Which is, it's cool that it's there, um, particularly because, yeah, I mean, some people might not want to use it. It is very different, and it does really change the game. And I mean, the maps are still probably good enough that without the exosuit, um, they'd be fine. Like, while you wouldn't have that extra degree of movement, yeah, you, the maps would still be well designed, I think. Anyway, um, overall, I'm pleasantly surprised. The gameplay is refreshing, it's different, but it is still definitely recognizable as Call of Duty. The weapons feel good to use, um, and the addition of the exosuit definitely changes things up a fair bit, which is great because, let's be honest, Call of Duty did need a bit of a change. As I said before, um, it feels almost like there was some influence from Titanfall or Crisis, and while the parkour definitely isn't as good as Titanfall's is, the movement's fun, it feels fluid, and it does add that extra element that just wasn't there in the past Call of Duty games. Now, as a PC game, it actually runs pretty well considering its graphics, which aren't necessarily amazing, but they do look pretty decent. Now, in my opinion, one of the most important things in Call of Duty is the creator class system, which I showed you earlier, and the advanced, and sorry, and advanced warfare has a pretty damn good system. It's pretty much Black Ops 2's with a few small additions. Also, um, the addition of the loot crates is an interesting idea, and so far, I am a fan of it. Like, yeah, I've got some pretty cool stuff from it. And those variable weapons do change things up a little bit. So yeah, I think it's safe to say that aside from the possible server problems, the game's actually pretty decent. It's a nice surprise, particularly considering how Ghosts was, though this is a new developer, so who knew what to expect. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching. If you want to watch my video on the single player, just click the link in the description or the annotation on the top left of the screen right now to head over to it. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to favorite, like, and or subscribe. This has been Tommy J. Have a good one.